Okay, so we're a few minutes after two o'clock or one o'clock here in Ireland. We we might just get started if that's okay with everyone. Um, I'm very delighted to welcome you all here this afternoon uh, to our first EU circular talk on how collaboration supports scaling up the impact of social enterprise in the circular economy. My name is Sarah Miller and I'm the Chief Executive of the Rediscovery Centre, which is the National Centre for the Circular Economy here in Ireland. I'm joined today by my colleague Claire Diney, who is the Research and Policy Director here at the Centre, and together we coordinate the Leadership Group on Social Enterprise and Business Models for the Circular Economy or the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform. Claire is going to be moderating one of our sessions here today in the panel discussion, so you will hear later from her. But uh, before we get started, I believe we're just going to kick off with a quick poll. So in this poll, we would like you to please share with us what type of an organisation you are representing today or which organisation you belong to. So this is just going to help us share uh, the conversation and shape some of the conversations today and just give us a flavour of who has managed to join us here today on the call. So we'll just give this a few minutes to we gather some feedback. I believe people are still joining the call as well. So we'll uh, no doubt continue to to gather information on this. So, so far we just have a few responses. If you can please um, enter into the poll, if you can online, that would be great. Uh, so far what we're seeing is a nice breakdown between social enterprise sector, public authorities and agencies, private companies and individuals and another as well. So um, that's a great kind of a, a broad audience. So we might just get started. Um, at the event today, I guess what we really want to do is explore with you how collaboration between social enterprises, the public and the private sector and others can act as a catalyst for supporting and growing the impact of social enterprises particularly those working within the circular economy. We want to look at the role of partnerships, procurement and networks, but we also want to explore other collaborations that help add value to this really important work. Within the circular economy, um, European circular economy stakeholder platform, and particularly within this leadership group, we recognize the very important role that social enterprise, enterprise organizations have played not just now, but have been playing for decades in shaping and expanding the circular economy and circular economy practices. They not only drive innovation and support circular economy practice through their activities, such as secondhand retail, repair, reuse and lending services, but in so doing, they also deliver social inclusion opportunities, working with the most vulnerable groups across our society. Today, we are delighted to be joined by Alice Senga, representing the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform. Alice is going to provide us um, with a brief introduction to the activities and work of the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform. Alice will be followed by Carl van der Purten of DG Grow, who will just describe the work of the Commission's Directorate General for Internal Market, Industry, entrepreneurship and SMEs and their role in supporting scale up social business models, impact and creating partnership. This will be followed by an interactive panel discussing um, various perspectives across stakeholders involved in collaboration with social enterprises from across Europe. Contributors will include Fiona McCool from the EPA in Ireland, representing the public sector. Jean Homiki of My Turn, representing the private sector. Irene Basil of the OECD, sharing research and policy advice. And finally, from Romain Gohier, representing the major social enterprise Envie to talk about their experience and their partnerships. So look, we really value your input today. We would really like you to engage in the conversation and in this discussion. And so please add any questions that you have to the chat function to make the most of this 
really interesting panel. You're going to have a chance to further discuss in the spatial chat um, with both the participants and the speakers that have joined us here today. And this is a really easy to use breakout space where you will be able to have breakout discussions and move around depending on who you want to talk to and what you want to discuss. Uh, so there'll be a little bit more information on that later, but that will be the closing element of the session will be this spatial chat. So if you have any particular interest in meeting with one of the speakers or with others online, then please do join the spatial chat. It's a great opportunity to dive deeper into the conversations that we're going to start here today. So we're really pleased to be part of the coordination group for the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform and we're managing the leadership group on social enterprises. So on this um, leadership group, in addition to the Rediscovery Centre, partners include Circular Regions, joining us today, Reuse, the University of Clermont, uh, the Collaboration Centre on Sustainable Consumption and Production. And we thank all of them for their contributions here today and indeed to the contributions to the leadership group throughout the year. This event is part of the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform, which is an initiative of the European Commission and the European Economic and Social Committee. The European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform acts as the network of networks, and we hear this a lot. It really is the network of networks, highlighting and promoting cross-sector opportunities for accelerating the transition to a circular economy. So before we start, just a few very um, short housekeeping. The event is being recorded, so please avoid multitasking if you can switch off your emails and your phones. And, and please keep your video and your audio off just to avoid any disturbances during the conversations. So for our very first speaker, I would like to introduce Alice Senga. Alice is part of the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform Secretariat the event's co-organizers, and she will describe the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform and the work. Over to you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sarah. Uh, and uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining uh, this event. As Sarah just said, my name is Alice Senga, and I work for the European Economic and Social Committee on the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform. Uh, but as Sarah said, I will very briefly uh, take two minutes of your time to uh, to tell you a little bit more about the, the, the platform. The platform, the, the name is a bit long, is the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform, but we call it SS uh, for short, uh, is a joint initiative by the European Commission and the European Economic and Social Committee. The platform really aims to uh, foster the transition to the circular economy by providing a space for the stakeholders to share about their experiences. From the beginning, the platform adopted a bottom-up approach where the contents came from the stakeholders. The idea was really, as Sarah already mentioned, is, was really to create the network of networks where civil society, public authorities, uh, private organization could exchange best, best practices um, uh, strategies, uh, knowledge, knowledge pieces, among other things, uh, from across the continent and also across sectors. The platform uh, has a website to implement uh, this, uh, this vision, and on the website you will find events, good practice, and other content from the circular economy community. There are 24 members, 24 active members in the uh, of the circular economy uh, leading this platform. They are known as the coordination group. This group come from um, the members of this group come from a broad spectrum of organizations and they're selected via an open call. Their mission is to implement the platform's objectives and foster the debate uh, on the circular economy. The group use this uh, format of event called the EU Circular Talks uh, to discuss selected very few, very uh, specific uh, topics uh, in more de uh, in more details. Uh, the concept, as you 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 may, you might know, is. Uh, three phase has three phase it's an online uh, event a discussion and an output document which resumes the process and also the contribution from the community 
the uh, the EU circular talks is open to all. So if any of you is interested, has a topic in mind and is interested in bringing it to uh, to, uh, to 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 the rest of the community, please don't hesitate. To just contact us. We'll be more than happy to help you with that. So as Claire said, today's topic is a very interesting one. Uh, it will highlight the interconnectedness interconnectedness between the circular the circular and the social economy. Today's speakers are very varied, but complementary in a way, because they come from large and small, small social enterprises, but also public, uh, public sector and also researchers. The panelists will explore how collaboration between various actors can act as a catalyst supporting the growing impact of social enterprises in the circular economy. They will also share the challenges and opportunities they have identified, they have identified or faced. Together, then, as Sarah mentioned it very clearly, this is a very interactive. We had interactivity when we designed this event, but and then together we will explore the different ways to um, to encourage collaboration and what kind of benefit lies within. Um, we invite you, we warmly invite you to stay a little bit longer after the panel discussion to join the discussion on uh, on spatial chat, which is a slightly different environment with a slightly different vibe as well in it than to have it on 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 teams. So uh, we really hope that uh, a lot of you can join us afterwards. Um, I said that I would just take two minutes of your time to present the the, the platform. So uh, my two minutes is up, uh, I believe. If I can just finish uh, with one single thing is to invite you to submit your content, to submit um, your best practices, to submit your failure, maybe as well uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, in, your, in your domain uh, to help others and to continue this, uh, this collaboration, because I truly believe that collaboration starts already here and now. So I hand it over to you, Sarah. You're on mute, I think. Thank you so much, Alice, and thank you for your contribution there. And again, I would encourage everyone on the call to, to go to the platform to see all the wonderful resources that, that are there and supports for the circular economy transition. Now, um, without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce our second speaker, Carl van der Purten from DG Grow. Carol is the policy officer, social economy in DG Grow, and focuses mainly on the following themes. The use of digitalization and new, and new technologies within the social economy, scaling up social business models and the creation of business partnerships between traditional and social economy enterprises. He also works on financing opportunities for social economy companies and social innovation. Carl, if I could hand over to you, please. You're very welcome here today. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, can you hear me well? Could you just confirm? Could yes, you not? Yes, we can hear you. Ah, okay, perfect. Uh, just to be sure um, that I'm not um, talking only to I'm myself. I'm getting a little bit of interference. Is anyone else getting some of that? No, it's no. Uh, everything is fine on the side. Okay, then I can start. And um, thank you very much. Um, thanks for um, having me here. Um, on behalf of the European Commission Did you Grow, um, I'm particularly happy that um, this partnership and this uh, particular event uh, gives some attention to, to social enterprises and that uh, um, circularity is directly linked through this initiative um, to the activities of social economy and so, uh, social enterprises. Um, it's First of all, very important uh, to stress that uh, circular economy should be framed in the in the wider uh, ambitions of the Green Deal. And in that regard, it is, for example, calculated that circular economy uh, can make a substantial additional contribution of, of 7.2 megatons of CO2 reduction, um, which immediately gives an, uh, an impression on, on the added value of, of circular economy and the overall ambitions of the Green Deal and, and the, the Fit for 55. Uh, package. Um, but what social economy and social enterprises 
add to that is also the social dimension. Um, reuse, for example, estimated that um, for every 10,000 ton of waste production, um, just one job is created uh, if the, the waste is in, incinerated. Um, six jobs are created when the waste is, is put away in landfill. Um, six, uh, 36 jobs are created when it's recycled and there is a potential of to almost 300 jobs in case of refurbishment and reusage. So that means that there is a huge potential if we put um, the right cycles, the right chains um, in place, the right cooperation uh, in place um, for job creation and not just regular job creation, but also social uh, job creation in terms of, for example, work integration. Um, I think the members of reuse and, and many people around the table here are especially um, uh, interested in that type of operations and uh, we need to be honest that that social economy is also a pioneer in that regard combining those social and uh, ecological elements um, within their business model. Um, in that regard it's 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 of particular interest for us uh, in the European Commission uh, in DG Grow working on social economy to promote also these type of um, business models. Um, probably many of you know that last year we had the social economy action plan uh, which is uh, after the social business initiative in 2011, a new engagement, a strong message from the commission towards social economy to support the sector as such, those type of business models to push them um, also in a broader context than, than um, uh, just their, their own um, particular activities and considerations in terms of, for example, social uh, care, um, social policy, etc., but to make them really a component of the of the industry at extent and therefore the recognition of, for example, the proximity and social economy ecosystem in the industrial strategy is a very important message uh, in that regard. Um, uh, one last small element in terms of policy priorities of the Commission, because I have only 10, 10 minutes time, so we had the Social Economy Action Plan, we have uh, the recognition of, of social economy in the industrial strategy. Um, one consequence of those uh, steps was uh, last uh, two weeks ago, we had the publication of a so-called transition pathway for social economy. Um, this transition pathway identifies actions um, necessary for social economy to drive the green and digital transition. Um, and there, of course, in the in the chapter on circular on, on green transition, circular economy is, is own omnipresent. Huh? So we have seven different action areas and social uh, circular economy is almost featured in every, but more specifically, for example, in reinforcing B2B collaboration for greener and circular value chains. And this is, of course, one of the topics of discussion um, today. So allow me to introduce you in some of the elements that the Commission is supporting or that the Commission is pushing to foster more collaboration between social enterprises active in the circular economy, but also with those enterprises that are not belonging to the social economy, but might have an interest in collaboration on circular topics, and also to convince companies that are actually not engaged in circular practices that have not circular approaches yet, um, to get them on board uh, and to convince them. Um, there are several levels of engagement there that we could could flag and and the first one is is actually on the business level itself uh, so um one element where we where we touch upon in the transition pathway is also um this uh, business readiness uh, so how can circular uh, behavior green transition of the business itself can be fostered how can the capacity uh, be promoted in that regard and by the way the commission has uh, in that regard very recently uh, published a very interesting uh, uh, quick scan uh, for circular business models um, it's an inspiration for organizing value retention in the loops of the business itself. I can very much recommend um, this uh, publication, which was uh, developed together with the Dutch government and was um, developed by, by Jan Jonker, which is really an authority from the University of Nijmegen, which is really an authority when it comes to um, circular uh, business models uh, and value chains, interaction between different businesses, etc. Um, I think this is 
a first priority before we can start thinking in terms of cooperation that organizations um, are aware about the circular potential they have, but also the, the necessity to invest more in circular practices. This quick scan can be a first step in that direction, so I can very much recommend it. Um, to you. Um, from the Commission's point of view, we also want to support actively in terms of capacity building those businesses and also intermediary organizations, social economy enter, uh, social economy federations to support their members and to support social enterprises by extent in this, in this transition. Therefore, for example, we have currently a call open uh, until February on supporting the green transition of social economy, for example, in circular behavior, in circular conduct, in circular processes within their business. So I can very much recommend a person that are interested in, in, this, uh, in this field um, to have a look at our website and I will also share the link in the chat um, afterwards. Um, when we go from the, uh, the, the, the practice of, of the individual business and the, the awareness, uh, the potential, the capacity to this collaboration element, um, first of all, the local element is, is very crucial. Um, this is not only uh, because of the social economy is very much anchored uh, to the territory and this is also something we try to defend with com combining this with the proximity economy that this is a an economy that wants to stay local that wants to regenerate local activity create new business models benefiting the territory uh, and so on and therefore several models of local cooperation um, are uh, are have a lot of potential and let me explain you one element that we try to push a lot and which you will also find back in our transition pathway um, by the way is um, clusters uh, so clusters what we call clusters of social and ecological innovation or just social economy clusters as you wish um, or a, a sort of um, in social economy terms quadruple helix uh, type of cooperation model where we combine businesses uh, with the same ambition, with the same uh, need for cooperation, with research institutions, with public authorities, but also with civil society. Um, that is a very interesting model uh, that operates at a local level. Um, in the traditional economy, as we could say, or the mainstream economy, those are usually sectoral organized. But what we see that in the social economy, they are actually cross-sectoral organized. They try to link interesting business cases across sectors so they try to for example reuse reuse the waste of one company as a source for the other company um, to give you some practical examples today we see that for example there is a, a very big um, issue uh, with fertilizers in the world economy so uh, fertilizers are extremely expensive and we see that business models within the social economy are capable of responding to that by using more organic fertilizers organic uh, recycling of, for example, food waste as a fertilizer for local agriculture businesses. Social economy can play a particular role in that sense. I have visited uh, a specific company in, in uh, Strasbourg who is working uh, on, uh, on, on this business activity and who is really like growing. And of course, nowadays with the increase and the, the skyrocketing price for fertilizer, this might be uh, a specific potential. If you want to know more about how social economy organizations get together to have, for example, joint research, joint skills investment, joint capacity building and training, joint investments at the local level through a cluster, I invite you to, to consult our report on the cluster, uh, social economy clusters or clusters of social and ecological innovation. I will share also the links uh, after my contribution. A last element I wish to highlight is beyond the local level where cooperation can also be established at the European level, at the national level, for example, on more strategic sector uh, elements. Um, today, uh, the Commission, not today, but last week, the Commission has started its work on a photovoltaic, uh, photovoltaic uh, panel uh, uh, alliance, uh, so PV alliance, because we need massive investment in solar energy in our European continent. Uh, I don't need to explain you what, uh, why this is so much needed, uh, given the, the, the crises that are happening today. Um, and we wish, our, our ambition is that thanks to the transition pathway and other initiatives supporting social economy, that social economy is also present in such type of 
let's say, high level industrial alliances. We had already the hydrogen alliance, we had already batteries alliance. Now we have this PV alliance and we have some information uh, coming to us by consultations that social economy can have a meaningful position there. In, for example, recycling of electronic equipment, there is already expertise in this field. Certain companies might have already expertise in recycling of, of, of PV uh, panels, but also in installation, for example. So, but we see a now a growing business case for circularity um, investments in terms of uh, recycling of, of uh, PV uh, panels, and we wish to position social economy as a, as a valuable partner uh, in that regard. Of course, in our, and there I will end my contribution, uh, social economy in our in the development of our transition pathway there are many issues as well huh? so we we see that for example the cooperation with the mainstream economy is not always straightforward there is an intense competition even sometimes between those um, but by models such as those clusters and alliances um, where the companies are bringing uh, their interests together and where value chains are also more closely connected to each other um, that can uh, out outpace or outperform uh, previous competitive issues between the companies and collaboration might also lead towards new avenues of of, um, of operations, production and also services. Um, so I think that, that this is really the way to go uh, and the European Commission is very much intended to support businesses, individual businesses, but definitely also support organizations who are for us the link with the indiv individual SME uh, on that journey. Um, I wish uh, to get more uh, engaged engagement uh, with you on those topics. So um, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I will share all the links of, of elements that I mentioned um, in my contribution in the chat. And I'm looking also forward for the real expertise um, of the cases after uh, my presentation. Thank you very much and have a great session. Carl, thank you so much for that contribution. It's really valuable information, I think, for everyone on the call. Um, so many relevant supports there and we really appreciate Jess if you can share those links with us and if you can um, hang around for the spatial chat I would suspect that you're going to be very popular because there's lots of very infra interesting information there um, and valuable information to social enterprises on the call and particularly those wanting to collaborate for scale. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to hand over now to Claire Diney, the Research and Policy Director here at the Rediscovery Centre. Claire is going to lead the panel discussion and I very much look forward to this engagement. So over to you, Claire. Thank you very much, Sarah. Um, so as Sarah said, we'll now move on to the panel discussion and we'll get to explore a bit further some examples of collaborations as Carl referred to. And I'm really delighted to welcome our four panelists here today. Um, so for this panel discussion, I'll first of all provide a brief introduction uh, to each presenter and they will then describe some examples and the types of collaborations they have experienced um, that have helped to scale up social enterprises. And after that, we'll then have time for discussion and questions and would really encourage you to please add any questions at all that you have to the chat. And we have already received a few from the audience in advance and we'll try our best to get to all of them. So our first speaker is Fiona McCool. Uh, Fiona works with the Irish Environmental Protection Agency here, uh, which is an independent public body. Uh, which has roles in environmental regulation, provision of knowledge, as well as advocacy for the environment. And one of the EPA's roles is leading the National Circular Economy Programme. Fiona is Senior Manager in the Circular Economy Programme and her work focuses on circular economy implementation, which includes, and very topical for this session, developing partnerships, as well as delivering funding programmes for innovation and demonstration activities and behavioural insights which supports circular economy communications and policy. A current focus is developing a national partnership across organisations to support a reuse and repair culture in Ireland. Fiona works closely with the Irish Department of Environment, Climate and Communications on circular economy policy and in supporting the national circular economy strategy. Thank you very much, Fiona. Thank you, Claire, for the introduction. And thank you for the to the organisers for the invitation to speak today. I'm delighted to be here. 
So as Claire mentioned, one of the ways that the circular economy program works is delivering through partnerships. And that's the aspect I'm going to focus on for my contribution. So the partnerships in the circular economy program target priority areas for the economy, whether that's social enterprises, the education sector, the manufacturing sector or agriculture. And through partnering with established national organisations and networks, we work to promote and to deliver circular economy practices at scale. So how the partnership work is that the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency, provides grant aid funding. We work in collaboration with our partner organisations to agree a set number of objectives um, and KPIs for a work programme. And a funding agreement is, is signed. Generally, it tends to be a multi-annual funding agreement. So one of the partnerships that we have that's supporting social enterprise is with the Rediscovery Centre. And we've been working together since 2018. The centre is based in Dublin City in a repurposed boiler house, which is an eco demonstration facility and includes four social enterprises on the site relating to furniture, to fashion, to bicycles and to paint. And these social enterprises use donated materials to demonstrate reuse and repair for the so social economy, for the circular economy through social enterprises. So one objective of the EPA's partnership with the Rediscovery Centre is to support scaling these social enterprises and supporting their outreach beyond Dublin City. And one of the ways that this has been done is the establishment of the Circular Economy Academy. And this is a free mentoring and supports programme which helps social enterprises and community organisations to establish or to grow their circular economy activities with the Rediscovery Centre bringing their significant expertise and experience in developing and growing social enterprises. The Rediscovery Centre hosts regional clinics in different parts of the country to identify those interested in taking part. And once organisations sign up, there are tailored mentoring sessions. The Academy provides business support services, including advice for startups, design thinking workshops, training and information on funding opportunities. There are now over 20 members, including 10 alumni members. And while some of the Academy members are replicating the activities that are happening at the Rediscovery Centre in Ballymun, some, you know, around paint reuse and textile upcycling, others are developing completely new enterprises, such as a lending library for sewing machines, uh, one organisation is looking at developing a community reuse hub and another is looking at um, uh, sharing resources for events and event management company. So I think this is an, a great example of how a partnership approach has supported the scale up of social enterprises delivering so, uh, circular economy activities. And having a partnership approach, especially where you have an agreement for multi-annual funding, means that you can identify longer term objectives and outcomes. And then for the partner, this certainty of funding for, allows them, uh, well, you know, the resources to bring in new staff, to identify other funding opportunities and to identify other opportunities for collaboration. So in my experience, there's often a multiplier approach which organically leads to scaling. And I've seen the benefit of social enterprises collaborating across our partnerships. So we have these one to one partnerships, but also uh, making connections across partnerships has allowed for scale up also. And I'll just give you two examples of this. So the, the EPA Circular Economy Programme also has a partnership with the Irish Universities Association. And this is a representative association for eight universities across the country. And we work in partnership on a campus living labs project. And in this partnership agreement, we've included some activities which are aimed at building relationships between the universities and social enterprise partners. So, for example, the Rediscovery Centre is offering bike repair and maintenance workshops and sewing repair skills workshops across universities. Then through our partnership with Community Resources Network Ireland, which is another social enterprise partnership approach. 
CRNI is an umbrella network for community reuse, repair and recycling social enterprises and has about 50 members. CRNI are arranging regional workshops for universities on opportunities to reuse and repair bulky items. This is providing opportunities for their members involved in furniture, reuse and repair to meet and work with the universities. And the ambition is that these new connections will you know, forge new relationships and future opportunities. Then the second example I'll give is in relation to our partnering with local authorities. And the Circular Economy programme has run funding calls over the years to support various reuse projects. And several local authorities applied for projects to introduce paint reuse within social enterprises in their communities. So the Rediscovery Centre supported this work through sharing their expertise on setting up paint reuse social enterprises. They shared this expertise with the local authority staff, with the community groups. And one outcome of this work is a new brand, Real Love Paint, is now being produced by three Cork-based social enterprises using paint they collect from local authority civic community sites. It's basically replicating the model that the Rediscovery Centre introduced in Ballymun and is a real example of scaling up through collaboration and partnership approaches. The Rediscovery Centre are also leading on a national paint reuse network through their work and their expertise developed in initially at their Ballymun site, but then scaling across the country. So just to wrap up my experience in working on the circular economy programme in Ireland um, is that developing public sector partnerships with social enterprise leaders and networks does support scale up in the sector. Over time, our collaborations have moved from within partnerships to across partnerships in different sectors. And this has had a multiplier effect through building new collaborations and relationships. And building on our experiences to date, we're now looking at developing a national partnership, as Claire mentioned, to support a reuse and repair culture in Ireland. And given the importance of social enterprise sector in delivering reuse and repair activities, we look forward to continuing to support scaling up the sector. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Fiona. And we were really keen to spotlight this example because we did feel it was a very unique approach um, by a public authority to collaborating with social enterprises. So we'll have a chance for questions after. I'm going to introduce our next panel member, Jean Hamiki, who is CEO and co-founder of My Turn and has been an entrepreneur working at the intersection of cutting edge technology, innovation and sustainability for two decades. Since 2013, when MyTurn was founded as a for-profit public benefit corporation or legal B Corp, uh, Jean has guided MyTurn to become the uh, leading solution for product reuse and product subscription services with over 1,000 organizations in 22 countries around the world. MyTurn helps communities, cities and businesses to manage over 1 million items and increases reuse of durable repairable products 10 to 100 times compared to individual ownership. So really looking forward to hearing uh, from Eugene. Thank you. And thank you, Claire, for that introduction. Um, and thank you everyone um, for attending. So collaboration is really at the heart of everything we do here at My Turn. And My Turn itself is a pur purpose-driven for-profit public benefit corporation with social and environmental missions written right into our founding documents. So all of us here realize we can no longer continue our unsustainable linear take, make and waste economy. However, organizations often lack easy to use tools and the digital infrastructure needed to transition to more circular models. Models that enable them to increase affordable access to products while reducing consumption and waste of those very same resources. At my turn, we provide the easy to use software platform and all the digital infrastructure needed from admin dashboards to online marketplaces to allow organizations to turn their often underutilized products into value and impact. This removes a major road roadblock from implementing new product reuse services, which as Carl mentioned earlier, also creates more jobs and economic opportunity. So let's jump into some case studies. Um, for the first one, we collaborated with another private company, Carhartt, the clothing and workwear brand, and local nonprofits in Detroit and the US on the Carhartt Workshop, 
a collaborative community space that includes spaces for repair and creation and a tool library where often disadvantaged people can borrow tools and equipment to help them renovate their homes or even start new businesses. MyTurn powers hundreds of these types of tool libraries and more general libraries of things run by social enterprises, public libraries, government, and educational organizations. And they're often serving their local and most vulnerable communities where people would not otherwise be able to purchase these items. Social, social enterprise startups also use our platform to greatly accelerate the development of new and innovative product reuse and circular delivery models. La Maniville, a Swiss social enterprise, offers a product subscription service where people pay a monthly or yearly fee to access electronics, power tools, and even medical equipment. They're meeting people where they live, um, which is key, and our platform allows them to offer multiple convenient pickup locations within people's local communities and return items at one of four locations or even have those items delivered to their home. They're also part of a public-private partnership themselves, where they're compensated for reducing electronic waste based on an eco rating that our platform allows them to track about each of their items and its usage. In Iceland, we're collaborating with Social Enterprise, the RBK Tool Library, on the Circular Library Network, which develops locally manufactured modular self-service electronic lockers, like vending machines for large items, where the items are returned after they're used, to make borrowing items like power tools, carpet cleaners, or pressure washers easier and more convenient and affordable than purchasing new. By building on our platform, rather than developing all of their own digital infrastructure, they're able to more rapidly prototype, test, and deploy the lockers, and they'll be able to scale their growth and impact more quickly by tapping into MyTurn's network of existing customers and fellow social enterprises. So another important strategy we actively use to more rapidly scale impact is to work with networks of new and existing organizations. In Belgium, we collaborated with D-Transformation, enabling them to more quickly create a growing network of over 30 baby fee lending libraries where parents or caregivers can pay an affordable membership fee and borrow travel play pens, toys, and other items for growing infants and babies without having to purchase them. When they need a larger size or a different model of the items, not the babies, of course, they can be easily returned and borrow other items. Similarly, we're working with networks of organizations in the arts sector, local agriculture and farming, economic development, assistive technology, and more. Collaborating with local social enterprises allows us to offer a shared support model where MyTurn provides that easy to use digital infrastructure and our partner will bring the domain expertise and often better know the specific needs of their local community, city, and region. Working with networks of existing organizations or organizations that are looking to replicate their models can provide one of the fastest ways to accelerate growth and impact of innovative circular models. Having said that, whether an organization is part of a network or more, or more independent, we also use digital tools to facilitate the sharing of data and best practices. We help standardize impact reporting, like on greenhouse gas emissions from reuse compared to purchasing. And all of this enables social enterprises to optimize their operations and measure and scale their impact more rapidly. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jean. And it's great to have an example just of how digital tools can help to support our scaling up of social enterprises. And I'd love to see one of those vending machines as well um, sometime in Ireland. So our next speaker is Irene Basil from the uh, OECD. She's a policy analyst in social economy and innovation. The OECD has over 20 years of experience delivering research and policy advice in social economy, entrepreneurship and innovation. Um, for the past three years, Irene has been coordinating the OECD Global Action, promoting social and solidarity economy ecosystems as co-funded by the EU. And this action targets over 30 countries to support the development and inter internationalization 
of the social and solidarity economy. Her team has also recently published a report on making the most of the social economy's contribution to the circular economy, which I'll also pop into the chat. I mean, thank you so much. Great, thank you so much, Claire, for this invitation. Um, as you mentioned, the OECD just published in January of this year a policy brief uh, on making the most of the contribution that the social economy has brought in the past and can bring in the future to the circular economy. Uh, this work was led by my colleague Julia Ipens, who couldn't be here today, um, so please excuse her, but I'm sure many of you know her. Um, happy for Claire to pop in the link. I'm going to um, skip over those that are the main messages of that paper because I believe I would be preaching to the converted probably here, but uh, I think the OECD is broadly aligned with the European Commission who has been also funding this work um, on our reading of potential synergies between the two uh, movements. I just wanted to focus now on the topic of scaling strategies because the OECD has also long recognized the challenges that traditional scaling models might pose for social enterprises in particular, and the risk, of course, of uh, um, diluting their mission and hence the need to prevent an emission drift. So um, traditional scaling strategies such as the growth in size of a single organization might not work, and this has been confirmed by a recent work on the circular economy as well. And that's why uh, we prefer to talk about opportunities for collaboration um, to identify complementary scaling strategies between social economy organizations and also potentially circular economy organizations to facilitate their thriving. This can take the form of partnership. It can take the form of establishing specific groups, more formalized groups of social economy, circular economy organizations. Um, which enables them uh, to, to keep their size, to stick to their proximity and their participatory governance values, for instance, um, re remaining attuned to local needs and realities, maintaining this participative, participative dimension and uh, dialogue with the uh, local stakeholders, while at the same time developing a group identity that can foster, enhance the production of cost-cutting services, for instance, all the while ensuring uh, the overarching uh, identity as a group and respecting the specificity of each organization. Um, in this model, one uh, notable example that is coming more and more to the forefront are platform cooperatives, uh, and the OECD has um, some work coming up on this topic as well, so I invite you to stay tuned if that is of interest to you. Of course, another scaling model that might be appropriate uh, is the replication um, to allow social economy organizations to expand their impact, if not in size, then through open source sharing and dissemination of best practices. This is an indirect pattern to scale. Um, that although it might inspire copycats, uh, it can also invite new entrants and existing players to launch new products and business lines based uh, on the experience of the initial social innovator potential. Um, so with this a sort of theoretical introduction, I wanted to put forth one concrete example that the OECD has actually been uh, in the first uh, line of delivery. Um, again, in collaboration and with funding from the European uh, Union, and in this case, the European Foreign Partnership Instrument. Uh, we have since three years now, we're, um, we're arriving at the end of the project. Um, we have been running uh, what we call the OECD Global Action on promoting social and solidarity economy ecosystems. That has a number, of course, of key activity, the objective being to really place the social and solidarity economy as a viable business model for sustainable and inclusive growth worldwide. So within EU member states, but particularly beyond, um, it targets 34 member countries, including key partner um, countries such as Canada, the United States, Brazil, um, Korea, India, and um, one of the objectives was really also to foster cross-border exchanges. Of course, first and foremost, speaking to policymakers, which are our main constituents. 
So identifying good practices and letting a common understanding emerge over what can be policy initiatives to promote the social and solidarity economy internationally. Um, on that level, we focused in particular on two policy levers, one being legal and regulatory frameworks, so how to develop legal frameworks for the social and solidarity economy, and the second being a social impact measurement, so how public administration, public authorities can promote social impact measurement in a way that meets the need of the social, first and foremost, of the social and solidarity economy. On these, let's say, key deliverables, we will be soon publishing guidance. So if you're interested, again, stay tuned. The Global Action will run its final summit in um, on the 20, 21st of March of next year, uh, and you're all invited to attend. But taking a step back, um, one of the specificities of the Global Action that was also somewhat of an element of novelty for us within the OECD um, was the, um, the creation and the implementation of peer learning partnerships. And that uh, comes to my point of a specific model of collaboration that can foster linkages between social and circularity economy. The OECD has a long uh, tradition of running peer reviews, policy reviews, where one, two or more uh, governments, national or local, cross their views and their experience to, to sort of um, peer learn from one another. In this case, we implemented six six partnerships that were actually led, identified, promoted, bottom-up by the social and solidarity economy representatives themselves. We ran a call for proposals back in 2020 at the very beginning of the action. We selected six partnerships that were implemented over six months in 2021. And these partnerships brought together what is now a community of practice we had over 130 organizations involved. Uh, each of the partnership had over 20 um, member organizations, and they all had to come from more than one country, of course. Um, they focused on topics that were identified by themselves, so bottom up, uh, ranging from legal frameworks, social impact measurement, but also, for instance, the role of the social economy in uh, answering to the, the COVID pandemic. And in this work stream, one of the six partnerships that I wanted to spotlight here was led by UpSocial. Um, so that is a platform that comes really from the social innovation uh, movement together with Ashoka, so the world of social enterprises and social enterprise incubators. And they put together this proposal that uh, covered partners from 100, uh, sorry, 11 countries to support local authorities in improving cross-sectoral collaboration within the SSE ecosystem. Again, with a specific eye to the role that um, the SSE played during and after the COVID pandemic. The, um, this partnership was called Respond, Rebuild, Reinvent, RRR. I can also share the link because they, of course, produced um, a web page. And as part of our call for projects, they all had to produce an outcome report which crystallizes the main learnings of their exchanges. One particular feature of this partnership is that they themselves issued a call for proposals to identify cities, so government, local government levels, that were willing to take part in the peer exchange. Uh, they selected nine cities that wanted to collaborate across the world. Uh, these range from Belo Horizonte in Brazil, Dublin in Ireland, Guadalajara, Montreal in Canada, Rotterdam, San Francisco, Turin, Warsaw, so a great variety. Um, and they all came together with this objective of improving cross-sectoral collaboration within the SSC ecosystem. So their, their sort of roadmap was first to deepen their understanding of the SSC ecosystem by crossing views. Um, on the local context, defining the challenges that can be tackled through cross-sectoral and collaborative approaches, exploring solutions and in particular social innovations that the SSC has produced locally. And finally, of course, experimenting, testing, reflecting upon how these solutions could be um, prone to transfer out from one city context to another. And it's very interesting because, uh, of course, there were a series of case studies produced to facilitate uh, mutual knowledge 
research, but that became public wealth because they are publicly available as part of their report. And uh, several of them uh, committed to pursue this dialogue in the future because, of course, the partnership only lasted six months. So there are uh, a few examples of twinning cities that will continue to work on um, their opportunities for SSE ecosystem development through cross-sectoral collaboration. One example that um, clearly involved also the circular economy, and this also uh, highlights the role of uh, specialized uh, intermediaries, that is something we always um, like to highlight, uh, is the city of Bilbao that has created a platform called Econopolo. I'm sure some of you know it. Uh, the main mission is really to produce and reinforce the SSC as a strategic economic business area for um, in a transversal cross-sector approach. So this was launched by the, net, by the local network of alternative and sol solidarity economy, but it is also included in the mayor's uh, multi-annual plan. Uh, and therefore it offers a comprehensive strategy comprehensive strategy, including, for instance, um, um, incubators, fab labs that are typically places for dialogue and, and exchange um, through a broad range of economic uh, measures, including responsible procurement, social entrepreneurship, but also um, circular economy and inclusive employment opportunities. So the, the peer learning partnership approach for us, it was it was, a, it was a great um, internal learning experience within the OECD, and I think it is something that was really valuable, that produced a lot of value for individuals involved, as the feedback survey demonstrated, for the organizations themselves, especially because these were bottom-up initiatives, and it created that mutual trust across a community of partners that can then uh, open the floor for, for further collaboration and exchanges. Thank you, Claire. Thank you very much, Irene, and some really interesting work, both ongoing and coming up around um, the Global Action Project as well. And we'll look forward to hearing the outcomes of that. And please do share any links uh, to, to all of those things you've uh, discussed. Um, last but absolutely not least, we'll hear from a social enterprise. Um, Roman Gohier works with Envie, uh, which is a network committed to creating jobs to qualify the most excluded people from the labour market through circular economy activities. Um, they're absolutely pioneering in this field. The Envy network consists of 52 social work integration organisations all over France. The members of a national umbrella organisation called Fédération Envy or Fédération Envy, uh, if I say it properly. The Envy network counts 3,000 employees, uh, including 2,200 benef uh, beneficiaries in work integration paths, and each beneficiary is continuously supported by an internal socio-professional advisor to help solve employability and more widely the social barriers and build their professional impact. So um, the activities within RV are extremely diverse, originally starting with house appliance reuse and moving into we logistic activities, mattress recycling, medical device refurbishing, more recently, photovoltaic panel reuse and recycling. So thank you so much, Roman. Thank you very much, Claire, for the invitation. I will um, start by presenting you the different types of partnerships that we have uh, at Envy, and then I will present you uh, one partnership in more detail. So uh, at five types of, of partnership. The first one is a partnership for post-work integration program. Um, each um, Envy local enterprise build partnership with the local household appliance distributors, large retailers, manufacturers and recycling companies, uh, which can employ our beneficiaries at the end of their um, work integration fixed term contract. At Envy, the work integration fixed term contract is uh, between um, six months and two years, and the average is about uh, 13 months. These partners are looking for the occupational skills they adhere by practicing within, within Envy. Uh, the second type of partnership that we have is the extended producer responsibility team. In our sector in France, the two main uh, EPR are eco and ecologic. Envy work uh, a lot uh, with uh, these two um, uh, EPR. 
they are non-profit organizations accredited by the French public authorities to manage the collection, reuse, decontamination and recycling of um, waste of electrical and electronic equipment. And we work in close collaboration with the uh, ecosystem and ecologic for contrastic, uh, reuse and treatment services. And we also uh, develop effective partnership with them to implement uh, experimentation on new waste flows. Uh, currently, we are um, developing uh, experiment for gardening and do-it-yourself uh, product. And uh, as the main directors are part of ecosystem and ecologic, they also take part of this uh, experimentation with us. The third type of uh, partnership that we have is with a philanthropic organization. Um, for us, the two main uh, philanthropic organizations with um, um, we have a, a strong partnership, our uh, Bruno Foundation and FAP EDF. A strong long-term partnership exists between uh, Envy and these two philanthropic organizations that uh, provide uh, financial support to boost our uh, Federation um, Envy members' development every year. Um, for example, with the Bruno Foundation, we, we have a partnership for uh, 23 years now. The fourth uh, partnership that we have is with the School and Training Center. The CFA du Creuté is a French uh, app apprentice training center which works in close cooperation with Envy. It's a real um, win-win partnership. Our Envy trainer provides tra a training module about um, household appliance repair in the nine months technician training program of CFA du Creuté. And CFA du Creuté is supporting us to create um, a new reuse and repair school uh, um, and in, on this project, we have also partnership with um, household appliance manufacturer like Bosch or Beko. And uh, this manufacturer animates a technical lesson in our training program. And then the last type of, um, type of partnership is uh, with a household appliance store. It could be physical or online store. For example, Cdiscount and uh, Seb offer unsold appliance stock on consumer returns to some uh, Envy workshop. We're also collaborating with them to second hand in different shop. For example, we did an experimentation in Bricorama store where customers can uh, drop off their out of order appliance. These appliances are collected, repaired, and ready delivered by uh, Envy technician in the second hand corner. Of the, of the store. Now I would like to focus uh, on the partnership with the Bruno Foundation, uh, created by Jean-Marie Bruno in 1955. Uh, Bruno is specialized in sales of uh, office and furniture appli office supply furniture to professionals. The company has implemented a strong corporate social responsibility strategy with a focus on environmental and social approaches. In, 19, 19, in 1991, the founder has decided to create a foundation to support the access to employment, access to housing, inclusion to economic activity, and action to support disadvantaged people. And since uh, 1999, a strong partnership is established by, between Envy Network and Bruno Foundation every year. A partnership agreement with a global budget is decided at national level and about 10% uh, uh, is dedicated to support the project of the National Umbrella Organization, the Fédération Envie. And all the um, Envie enterprise uh, can uh, submit a project and receive a financial, a financial support. For example, this year, the Foundation Bruno helped uh, seven Envie enterprises in different projects, like opening a new Envie store, a creation of a training area for beneficiaries in a work integration pass, renovation work and material purchase. Um, as we share the same value and we collaborate since uh, 23 years, we have uh, built a real uh, trust-based uh, relationship and work in full transparency about uh, our strategic development, development plan, plan. This historical partnership is essential for our network and represents a good uh, lever to obtain uh, public sub subsidies. As, um, as we are a non-lucrative enterprise, our, cap our uh, investment capacity is low. 
for our development projects relating to social and environmental purposes. The public subsidies managed by national or local authorities are usually our main source of support, but the maximum rate of grant is limited. So for each pro project, we should, to, we should be able to prove the self-financing or co-funding capacity. So the financial support of Bruno Foundation and also the, the other philanthropic organization, FAP EDF, are real uh, enabler to reinforce and scale up our activities. Thank you very much, Roman. And it's uh, really interesting to hear the diversity of different types of collaborations and partnerships that you have as a social enterprise. And of course, hearing about the importance of that long term relationship with the foundation that you uh, explained there. So we can now move into some questions. Um, please use the chat if you have any questions you'd like to submit. Um, we have until about half past and then there's time to move into the spatial chat where you can have more one to one discussions. Um, I'll start with one question just to get things started here. Um, quite interested from the panel about some of the emerging trends and I guess where do you see kind of the most movement in terms of different types of collaborations that have been described with social enterprises and what do you think are the key drivers? What are the motivators for public or private agencies or philanthropists to collaborate with social enterprises? So um, I guess um, we go back to the order of presentation, perhaps Fiona, if you have any initial reflections on that. And you can all turn your cameras on perhaps just for this um, panel discussion. Thank you, Claire. So in, in terms of the emerging trends, um, I guess what, what we see in Ireland is there's an increasing emphasis on uh, green public procurement. And Sarah mentioned that at the outset about the potential there is for procurement and um, growing and scaling social enterprises. And um, so so in the program I work on, the Circular Economy program, we have um, we've worked on supporting implementation of green public procurement in Ireland through guidance, training and monitoring and reporting. Um, and you can see that there's great scope for the public sector to stimulate reuse and repair, for example, through procurement, which then would in turn support the social enterprises. So I probably see that as as an emerging trend and one that we should probably look to build on. Um, you know, green public procurement is going to be looked at in more detail under the EU Green Deal. There's potential for future targets. Um, and there is, you know, I suppose I mentioned the partnership with the Irish Universities Association, and there is potential for, you know, universities as public sector bodies to build relationships with social enterprises around reuse and repair and other circular economy type of activities. And um, just to mention, I suppose, that Community Resources Network Ireland, I mentioned them as, as one of the social enterprise networks that we partner with. Now, it wasn't directly through our partnership with them. It was through funding from local authorities, but they've developed a virtual trade fair platform uh, to showcase the all the services that their members supply. And the idea of that is that it's an always on platform that can provide information for services for procurers. And we're absolutely supporting the, you know, the dissemination of information about that. And um, like through our work with the Office of Government Procurement, you know, raising awareness of, of this as an opportunity for social enterprises and for public sector organisations to, to deliver on climate action and circular economy goals. So, yeah, I suppose that's that's the emerging trend piece that I'd, I'd bring forward to the discussion. Thanks, Claire. Great, super, thank you. Um, Carl, did you want to add anything to that? My uh, my team's just crashed, so I missed uh, the last five minutes. You might have seen that I disappeared suddenly. So if you could just repeat the the, the question then, uh, or you were still on the emerging trends. 
still on the emerging trend. Oh, okay, perfect. Yeah, no Fiona problem. Just yes. Uh, procurement. That's all. So yeah, it is. Yeah, 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 definitely. That's that's one point where I wanted to to come to. So. Um, in terms of emerging trends, first of all, in in our discussion on the on the transition pathway, this was of course uh, very much prominent. First, in terms of um, let's say um, supporting elements such as public procurements, um, but another element that was very prominent was, for example, the this um, uh, aspect of uh, by social um, often uh, called or private procurement um, in human language, um, making mainstream companies trade cooperate um, uh, with uh, social economy organizations and in their procuring policies um, motivate them to uh, cooperate with social enterprises um, to uh, and that uh, can start with very very basic uh, purchases services that might be offered but what we see is that the more cooperation is established the more um, trust is also um, built between those partnerships and that can also grow higher up in the value chain. What do I mean by that? Uh, um, imagine, for example, a social enterprise that is organized as a sort of hybrid uh, company having very different aspects such as services, catering, uh, greening, um, offering packaging solutions, etc. Usually it starts with offering certain catering elements to a mainstream enterprise, but then the corporation evolves into more strategic type of uh, assemblage, manufacturing, packaging, uh, etc. So, which means that there is a very strong connection established uh, after a while. And that started initially with a, a pure by social intention, but along the way, the trust was built that actually the social enterprises is, is just uh, as an economic interesting actor and not just for the, the social or the green element that it might um, bring to the to the collaboration. And I think that should also be the goal of by social strategies. It should not become sometimes often said a social excuse uh, for a mainstream company uh, and this is the intention for collaboration. No, it should be on equal terms and also economically. And I think that is really the ambition of those type of strategies. Um, the Commission is also pushing that a lot. We have currently also a call open, by the way, on this particular field um, to promote partnerships at the local level to also build the expertise on how these partnerships should be supported to make sure that there are no um, false expectations, that there are preoccupations um, left out, that there is also some decent market research at the local level which sectoral activities are present for example in a certain region and what is the expertise of the social enterprises in that same region so that they can connect it to the right partners and that they can also deliver on their true value and not just for small deliveries or small image uh, branding uh, solutions let's say i think that is extremely important and something that was constantly present in our discussions and that's about let's say the, the the supporting elements and then when we are talking about sectoral elements i think that that many of the contributions here pointed already in terms of uh, electronics textiles food waste etc um to our surprise there is actually way more um, one particular element that was popping up in our transition pathway discussions is that many mainstream um, companies are looking for uh, raw materials, feedstock for their production, but they are, yeah, because of the, 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 the global value chains that are disrupted, they are not finding the resources anymore and certainly not at a, at a decent price. So circularity becomes suddenly uh, way more feasible in terms of economic um, uh, gain and also new partnerships are developed on that. For example, in the plastics industry, plastic feedstock, uh, recycled plastic is something that um, is very much needed by the plastics industry, but they um, have only access to industrialized feedstock and not, for example, consumer waste in terms of plastic. And there they search for some kind of a middle uh, partner, a middleman that can collect and that has access to individual consumer waste plastics. And that can also lead it towards um, those plastic companies to use as a recycled uh, feedstock. Um, they believe that social enterprises, for example, have a very interesting role because they are especially um, uh, an expert, an expert partner in this uh, recycling, upcycling, this filtering, this sorting of waste that otherwise would not be used anymore and where there can be uh, strategic partnerships uh, established. We can mention this for every, basically every sector, uh, such type of opportunities, but what is very much needed 
are those middlemen, but also people who know the markets very well and know from both sides um, of the of the partnerships what can be feasible and how partnerships can be um, established. Um, maybe that's way too long, but these are some of the, the um, <laughs> elements that I could bring to this uh, tr uh, trans uh, debate. Thank you. No, thank you. Sorry, just cut in and out a little bit at the end, but I think we we followed that um, quite well. And it was interesting. We just had a biosocial um, promotional campaign in Ireland last week. So it's quite interesting that you raised that as well. Um, Jean, I might turn to you then um, for some reflections as well. It's quite interesting. You're a B Corp. Um, I don't know if there's a connection in there as well. But yeah, uh, any any thoughts on trends or key drivers for private agencies to collaborate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I'm actually going to jump in on um, something Carl said about um, supply chains and the importance there um, first. So just we are seeing supply chain disruptions, and I think those are going to continue. Um, we're you know, more onshore, onshoring, um, say here in the States and around the world of manufacturing. Um, that is going, that is, you know, we're seeing inflation increases in pricing, which um, basically is pricing some people out of being able to purchase items, being able to afford them. This is, I think, going to continue to drive demand um, and which we're already seeing for, you know, not just green and sustainable products or things that are said to be green and sustainable, but actual real reuse, repair, um, need for durable goods, especially if they're going to need to operate in basically this climate of, you know, more difficult to sometimes supply certain parts, um, you know, from overseas or where things are less expensive. So certainly in many areas, we're going to need to move to these, you know, basically more product service systems and much higher um, levels of reuse. So, and, you know, that's then going to drive, um, you know, those additional jobs in the reuse and repair type industry um, and, you know, basically keeping products in use as long as possible to drive those costs down. Um, we've seen up and ups and downs on, like, say, um, companies that are forming, um, you know, as social enterprises, we consider ourselves as a for-profit, but social enterprise and purpose-driven. I think that especially newer companies, smaller ones, we're seeing many more of those um, basically start to form. Um, and we see especially younger generations want to work for companies that have a purpose that are purpose driven, not just to make as much money as possible. They'll take jobs that maybe pay a little bit less, but they're working for a company that is actually doing good in the world or in their local community. Um, that's, you know, that's what we see. And that's one of the reasons why we formed, I mean, we, you know, weren't necessarily thinking circular back in 2013 and the platform actually existed before that, but it's, we literally have a circular business model written into our founding documents and it, you know, it helps, you know, which is basically, you know, increasing affordable access to products while reducing consumption and waste of those very same products. And we are seeing more, you know, both for-profit, non-profit, different models that have, that are these very purpose driven. So, and I'll, let others speak as well. Great, thank you. Uh, really um, relevant that young people are looking for these purpose-driven roles. I'm um, glad you mentioned that. Uh, Irene, did you want to comment from an OECD perspective about some of the trends you've observed, perhaps through the projects you've worked on or other um, drivers? Not to repeat, I think the previous intervention very well highlighted the real economy drivers that social economy organization experience on the field. But to bring my complementary experience, I want to say that the social economy, just like the circular economy, has really moved to the forefront in international policy discussion. There is a, a surge in attention since the COVID crisis, but also a little bit before that. Um, we, we at the OECD perform regular in-depth policy reviews where we help national and local governments take a look at how they're boosting, how they're promoting social entrepreneurship and social enterprises. And we see that the social economy is increasingly referenced in all policies around circular, environmental, rural interventions and so on. So there is already this um, cross-sector view that is brought on, of course, I think it can all be dated back to the Agenda 2030 and the, the major step change that it brought on where 
private sector became on equal footing as the public sector in terms of its accountability to advance, to make progress towards the sustainable development goals. So that was one huge shift. But the other big shift was also that it promoted this shift view. So when we say sustainable, we we have this metrics view where there are positive and negative impacts that sometimes offset one another. And uh, it has become clear that you cannot just report on positive impacts on one aspect because it might hide other negative impacts. This brings me to the whole impact washing critique as well. And that's where um, all the movements around sustainable investment, sustainable procurement, um, have emerged where really social and green have to go together and you can no longer tackle one without the other from a public policy point of view. It also, I think, increased our attention from, moved our attention from purely impact reporting to impact measurement and now more recently to impact verification. So zooming in, uh, bringing much more scrutiny into impact claims and impact evidence that is being produced by the private sector, where, of course, social economy organizations face their own challenge around social impact measurement, but very often can claim to have, even if a smaller, a more in-depth uh, impact. And as part of this broader international attention, uh, the OECD itself has experienced uh, what we call uh, the move from mar from the margins to the mainstream. We let, we ran a conference last year as part of the global action that was titled like that, moving the, the social economy from the margins to the mainstream, from local to global, not because we want to globalize their business models, but because it has come to the forefront of international discussions. And a clear testament to that is that in June uh, of this year, the OECD uh, Council of Ministers came to approve what is the first uh, international legal instrument around the social economy. Uh, I hope I'm not cutting. Am I? Are you hearing me clearly? Yes. Okay. Sorry. Um, so it was a groundbreaking and very timely instrument. Again, because it's part of this surge in international attention, it was followed on by the ILO resolution that you might be aware of. We hope that we'll, there will be also a UN-wide resolution next year. Of course, the European Action Plan on the Social Economy contributed to building this momentum. And um, what is interesting is that this OECD recommendation, which is, of course, a soft law instrument that has to be put into practice, so it has to be translated into local, international legislation, decrees, policies, but it is binding and it, it has been um, signed on not only by OECD member countries, but also by additional adherents, for instance, like Argentina, Mexico, Morocco. So we're really seeing also uh, different geographies coming into these discussions. And that's another huge step change in the global political agenda. Fantastic. Thank you. Absolutely. That policy alignment has been a real noticeable shift, I think, in the last couple of years so great um on to you irene i actually have, have three questions for you <laughs> um sorry on to um roman um three questions for you uh the 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 observations on trends if you want to add to anything that's been said um one very specific question through the chat about um how uh, the uh, role of social enterprises in repairing uh, solar panels has uh, picked up a, a bit of interest there. And then I think you might be um, well placed as well to answer the second question in the chat, which is that how can you assure partnerships are real, real win-win for both the social enterprise and um, the collaborating partner? Um, if you could share your thoughts on that. Oh man, sorry. Okay, sorry. Uh, I will start um, by the emerging trend uh, in France at national level. The anti-waste and economy circular law permits a new major improvement uh, with the creation of new producer responsibility sectors to include new product families in the circular economy, like uh, toys, sports, uh, and do-it-yourself, do-it-yourself equipment and building materials. This regulatory development. Uh, lead to new collaboration. EPR and um, distributors contact us to experiment, experiment new reuse, sorting, uh, recycling and logistic activities. Uh, and we build together uh, experimentation. For me, the most important thing in this, in this new partnership 
is that to, um, to start with small amount of waste, test and try methods and scale up progressively our activities. And at the beginning, at, at experimentation stage, uh, the um, partnership must be based on the time spent uh, on the experimentation and not on the not on the tons of waste at the beginning. Um, if so, we, we couldn't uh, experiment together. Um, I will also answer to the question about um, solar uh, panels. Uh, we also have uh, developed an experimentation with the EPR, um, French EPR on solar panels. It's, it's, it's called uh, SOREN. And uh, we used to do uh, logistic activities with SOREN since um, seven years. And uh, we noticed that a lot of uh, uh, panels um, were uh, still uh, working or with only a few reparations needed. So we, uh, we decided to develop a reuse and um, research center in the south of France at saint Louis. Uh, we explore, uh, we, we did a big benchmark of the um, potential uh, recycling technology. And we choose a process uh, called delamination the Japanese process, and we implemented this uh, process, and now we we have an um, uh, industrial line which employ um, 25 people with 18 people in integration work program to reuse and recycle uh, um, solar panels. I can send you more information in the chat. That's fantastic, and it's great to see Social enterprise is uh, really innovating and um, pushing uh, the boat out um, on that area. We are nearly out of time. Um, that's gone very quickly. And thank you, everyone, so much for all your reflections. I'm going to just hand over to Sarah for a uh, quick wrap up, but there is more time, um, yes, in the spatial chat, and Sarah will share the details. Brilliant. Uh, thank you so much, Clara. That was really great. And yet we are going to provide an opportunity to continue this conversation. There's lots of questions coming in through the chat. So let's try and get those answered through the spatial chat following the wrap up. Um, just to wrap up, um, I'm not sure about anyone else, but I have really enjoyed hearing from all of our speakers today. And I wanted to thank you so much for your time. A big thank you to Alice, who presented opportunities to engage with the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform. Also want to thank Carl for his contribution from DG Grow. He highlighted some really practical methods and mechanisms to support scale and increase impact from social enterprises within the circular economy space. In innovative spaces such as social enterprise clusters, support services for capacity building and investment, and he also highlighted opportunities to encourage activity within local economies, which are employing proximity principles. So that was really great to hear that from him. Fiona McCool presented the innovative and highly successful approach from the Irish Environmental Protection Agency in supporting social and circular economies. In addition to the work here with the Rediscovery Centre as the National Centre for the Circular Economy, Fiona highlighted some really pioneering work that is being delivered at the moment through partnerships with universities, with communities and with local authority networks and really highlighting the opportunities and additionalities that those partnerships bring. We then heard from Jean uh, from MyTurn.com who highlighted how digital solutions are really providing opportunities for social enterprises to scale and grow impact beyond their local community. Um, providing some really successful case studies there from reuse and sharing organizations. And it was great to see just that mainstream rollout of product libraries is something we'd really like to see an awful lot more of. Irene shared her experiences from the OECD presenting the social and circular economy as a solution for global action. And that was really great to hear. And she highlighted the policy levers, which are really important and can be employed to underpin that scale. Collaboration was also noted as being really critical to growth through peer learning and also through these communities of practice. So really nice to hear, to hear that from you, Irene. And then Roman presented a really useful case study from Envy, highlighting five successful partnerships with work integration programs, producer responsibility initiatives, 
philanthropic organizations and joint initiatives with French education centers and manufacturers, which is really interesting to hear. And also that relationship with supply chain managers for stock managing, for stock management. So I think that's hugely helpful to a lot of our, you know, other social enterprises throughout Europe. So a lot of opportunity there to, you know, really scale through collaboration. And I think it's been great to hear from all our speakers today. So I want to thank you sincerely for your contributions and thank Claire, obviously, for facilitating such a lively discussion. Claire, thank you very much. In relation to the next steps, uh, what we're going to do from this conversation is together with the other members of the leadership group, so that's Reuse, Circular Regions, University of Clermont and OVEM, and the Collaborating Centre on Sustainable Consumption and Production, we are going to all work together to create and gather the input from today's discussion. We're going to prepare a paper that we'll share um, and use as a discussion topic for the annual conference of the European Circular Economy Stakeholder Platform next year, which is happening in February. So we have a little bit of work to do following today, but I think just the content that we've been able to gather will be very insightful and we'll be delighted to share that at next year's conference. So finally, I just wanna thank everyone for joining us on the call today. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to participate in the conversation. Um, I'm going to hand over to Sarah so she can explain to us exactly how the spatial chat is going to work, if that's okay. Zara, if you can hop on the call. Um, and I noticed there in the chat, Claire has also put a link where we can jump to, but if you have anything additional, Zara, to, to, to share with us, please do join the call. No? Yes. Okay. Uh, oh, yes. I'm okay, here. thanks, over um, to you. Uh, so you can all uh, head over using the, um, the link that was sent in the chat. Uh, the, the, the room is, I mean, it fun in functions like a room, so you will be able to have your avatar um, within the spatial chat and move it around and join different conversations if you wish. Uh, it's very easy to use. Um, simply remember that when you're not speaking to turn off your microphone so there's no interference. And uh, do not hesitate to ask your questions um, to the speakers. Great. Thanks for that, Sarah. And I look forward to seeing you all in the spatial chat and 